Hello and welcome to the handover video for your Auto Sleeper Symbol Plus. We'll start on the outside of the vehicle and work our way round and when we come back to this door we'll move inside. So starting here on this flap, under here, using the engine key, you can take the cap off for diesel and the AdBlue goes below. There is a warning light comes on in the dashboard when AdBlue is getting low. The warning light comes on when there's about 1500 miles to go till you need to refill. Inside the passenger door, here you'll find below the passenger seat, the toolbox for the vehicle. And underneath this panel here is the vehicle battery. There are remote posts underneath the bonnet if you ever need to jump start the vehicle. You shouldn't have to go near the vehicle battery during the uh, next five to seven years, the lifetime of the, the, the vehicle battery. This is the bonnet release for your vehicle and next we'll look under the bonnet. Secondary release for the bonnet is in the centre, just underneath the bonnet there. Bonnet support there. On the left hand side washer fill. Now you won't need to go near this in between servicing but at some point if you ever do need to top up either the steering fluid, brake fluid or the coolant, three little catches here release this section of trim and allow access to the fill points. Oil filler is here, dipstick just there and the remote post for jump starting the vehicle that we spoke about, the negative post is there and the positive post is underneath this flap here. Continuing around the outside of the vehicle, the LPG fill point is here, electric hookup point here, to release, push down with one hand and pull out. When connecting to the electric hookup point on a campsite, always connect the vehicle first, then carry the dead lead over to the hookup point. Never connect to the hookup point and carry a live lead over to the vehicle. Continuing down the side of the vehicle, gas emergency control, the LPG tank is under slung and there is a emergency uh, shut off valve on there underneath the vehicle. To turn the gas on underneath the vehicle you will see a large black box. At the bottom of that black box there is a plastic clip. Undo that clip and the front of the box comes free. Inside there you'll see a brass ring, turn it anti-clockwise to open the valve, turn it all the way till it comes to its end stop and then turn it back a fraction. Then you can return the cover. The only time you're likely to be required to close that off will be if you're shutting the vehicle down totally for winter months or if you're going onto a ferry. The ferry operator may want you to disconnect your gas at source. If the gas has been disconnected at source, the regulator, which is now being pointed to now, is a drive safe regulator. It has a reset button, which is uh, round the other side of the vehicle, but you'll feel it quite simply. Press that in for a count of three and then release, and that is the gas regulator reset. That regulator will only be, need to be reset if you switch the gas off completely or if the vehicle has been involved in a collision because that's a safety cutout valve that senses any vibration from an impact. To lock everything back in place, just push that back plastic clip firmly home. Continuing down the off side of the vehicle, additional fill point. This is the uh, fill point with an ordinary garden hose. You can fill your fresh water tank. If you're on a fully serviced site, there is a automatic fill that can be connected there and it will continuously fill the tank from the full service. Again, on a full service site there may be television and satellite hookup points and you'll find them in here. Just to the left of that, vents for the fridge and below them grey and freshwater tank drain taps. As we approach the rear of the vehicle, you'll find the exhaust ports from the boiler and the hot air blown heating system. To the rear of the vehicle, the two doors open to give you access to, in the first instance, the cassette for the toilet. To release the cassette, blue handle at the bottom lifts up and the cassette slides out. 
when you take the cassette to the disposal point, euphemistically this is known as the crap cap, remove this and drain your cassette pressing this button here to release the air pressure and the waste material flows out. So, When putting your chemicals in, there's measurements on the cap, chemicals in here, green um, is preferred, blue, there's a lot of camp sites won't accept it anymore because of the formaldehyde killing bacteria. Put in your required dosage of chemicals, add a litre to a litre and a half of water, give it a wee shake and return the cassette to the bathroom. So, the next cupboard, you'll find isolator valves for the cooker, the heater and the three-way fridge. In this door here, this is your hot water boiler. The yellow valve on the top is the drain valve for the hot water boiler. When you're doing a winter drain down, you open that valve and that will drain all the water out of the boiler. And this is a separate isolator valve for the boiler. Also stored in the rear of the vehicle was the winder for your awning. Always have the side door of the vehicle closed when you're winding the awning out. Bring it down to a comfortable height and then release the feet. If you want to come in. The feet are released underneath the awning pelment so. Now it's quite a windy day today so we're not going to put the awning up but it's simply the feet go down, get locked in place and then you would wind the awning the rest of the way out. These are additional cross members, as you can see on the instructions here, they brace against the awning support. Just inside the door of the vehicle, you'll find a button for the step, a 240 volt for if you're running an electric barbecue or anything outside the vehicle, and exterior lights and interior floor lights controlled from the outside of the vehicle. To wake up the auto sleeper panel, just touch it anywhere on the panel and it will come to life as you can see here. Always, always switch this panel on first before switching this panel on. The first thing that happens when you switch this panel on, it looks for a power source. If you haven't switched this on, there's no 12 volt power source going to it and it will immediately think there's an error and you'll get an error code and you'll have to go through a reset procedure. Switching this on, once you've woken it up, on off button is on the left hand side. You can change the settings at the moment, it's set so that the interior lights come on and the awning light comes on when you switch the power on to begin with. This can get changed inside the settings. Here we go, main lights on, awning light on. So we'll switch the main lights off and it will just be the awning light will come on when you switch the system on. The exterior awning light has come on when it came up. Right, other controls on this panel, water pump on. We've got no water in the vehicle because it's very cold. So that's why that alert came up. On the day you collect the vehicle, there will be water in it and the heating will be on. Next button down, water levels in the tanks. As you can see, because it's the middle of winter, we've done a drain down, there's no water in the system. Battery levels, showing condition of your leisure battery, the vehicle battery, any power that has been currently drawn by systems, that's the power that we're drawing from mains. We're parked underneath a lean-to, so there's no light falling on the solar panel. Otherwise, there would be an indicator there. You can move to the water tanks by using these arrows and back to the batteries, or you can use these two buttons to source them. The moment we're running on the ledger battery, and that's the recommended setting. If you move to the vehicle battery, there is, of course, always the danger that you run the vehicle battery down and you can't start the vehicle. However, in an emergency, if you need 12 volt supply for something, you can run from the vehicle if your leisure battery is completely flat. 
but leave it on leisure battery as standard. Within the settings, you can adjust, you can override this and you can operate your heating settings from here. You can also select what's going to charge. At the moment, active battery select, we're using leisure battery, but we also have a smart arrangement. So if your leisure battery is flat, if required, the vehicle will automatically switch over to the vehicle battery. We recommend you leave it on leisure and leisure only. Solar battery select. Well, let's pick leisure battery or vehicle with smart or vehicle on its own or leisure on its own. So your wheel system operates both the hot water and the central heating. Starting with the hot water, just pressing this button will switch it on and it's on at 900 watts. Two wavy lines means you're drawing 1800 watts running the hot water on electricity. That's running the hot water on gas. That's running the hot water on a combination of gas and 900, combination of gas and 1800 watts, and that's it switched off. Heating, on and off, now running on gas. Gas and 1800 watts, off. Electricity, now with electricity running your heating, one, two and three are six, 12 and 1800 watts respectively. Gas, gas and 1200 watts. Once you've chosen your desired fuel, up and down your thermostat, it ranges all the way up. Maximum's about 30 to 32 degrees Celsius and you can bring it down to frost protection level as well. A nice comfortable midway point should see you in most conditions though. Your motorhome is equipped with what's called a three-way fridge. It runs on three different fuels. To switch the fridge on, press and hold this square button here until everything lights up. There will always be a small blue light on the fridge when the fridge is in operation. This button here toggles between fuel sources. This button sets the degree of cool, coolness of the fridge. The more bars lit up, the colder the fridge becomes. At the moment we're on automatic and the fridge will intelligently choose the fuel source that is best suited. At the moment we're plugged into mains electricity so it is running off mains. Just single press of the button will wake everything up again. Taking it off automatic you then select your fuel source manually. Mains electricity, 12 volt, are we getting an error code? because the engine isn't running. It doesn't actually run off the battery, it runs off the alternator. If the engine was running, it would work absolutely fine. Gas will self-ignite and operate on gas. We advise you leave it on automatic and the fridge will just decide when you are plugged into mains, it'll run on mains. When you start the engine and drive off, it'll switch to the battery and draw 12 volts. If you're not driving, and you're not plugged in anywhere, it'll automatically go to gas, as long as you have the fridge switched on. To switch the fridge off completely, press and hold until the wee blue light disappears, and that's your fridge off. With the LPG tank full and the isolator valves in the on position, simply turn the gas and press the igniter button. Hold the gas for a few seconds until the thermocouple heats up. Once the thermocouple has heated up, the gas flame will stay on. If you switch it off too quickly, the gas will cut out automatically. The thermocouple is designed to detect flame and heat. When the flame goes out, the thermocouple will switch off the gas when it cools down. Three gas rings on top. For the grill, exactly the same. Hold it for a few seconds till it heats up and the grill is now working. Similarly for the oven, turn the dial the other direction, the back of the oven will light up. Hold the oven for a few seconds, hold the button in, then release once the thermocouple is heated up and you will have a constant flame. To operate the toilet, there is a lever at the front here. I'll put the lid up so that we can see the diaphragm that separates the holding tank for the waste material below. Move the lever to the right and you'll see the diaphragm open and close. To operate the toilet, you open it. After using the toilet, close the lid, press the blue button at the back. With the water pump switched on, that will then rinse the bowl. As long as you keep the button down, the water will continue to flow. 
when you release the button the water will stop flowing and then all you have to do is close the flap back over again. As I said previously there's no water in the system today because the, it's cold and we don't want any freezing damage before you arrive to collect your vehicle. When you have filled your water tank you have to charge your boiler. The way you do that is you turn the tap to the hot position and open it. Water will flow from the tap and there will also be a lot of air. Uh, you keep running the water until there is a continuous flow of water. That means your boiler has been charged and is full. Turn through to the cold make sure you have continuity of flow of water there as well. Once you have achieved that, you can then switch on the water system to heat the water up to give you running hot water. Standard Peugeot layout on the dashboard, windscreen wiper stock on the right, light stock on the left and indicator, and then you have your cruise control down here. On steering wheel controls for the radio, uh, volume up, volume down and mute and Bluetooth for your phone. Your Bluetooth um, pairing with the phone will be done before you leave on the day. It's a standard six speed manual gearbox to select reverse. There's a collar you pull up far over to the left and up to select reverse. Once you select reverse you'll get an image on your reversing camera. There are also reversing sensors. If you fit a bike rack onto the back of your vehicle then the camera becomes your main source of information when reversing. Fan speeds on the internal dial and whether you recirculate air or whether you bring fresh air in on the dial on the right hand side. Temperature on the outer bezel, direction of airflow on the outer bezel on this side. There is no heated rear window on the back of the vehicle. This button only demists the mirrors. If you disable the airbag in the passenger seat, the light will come on to warn you. Deadlock button from inside the vehicle and you can switch off the um, anti-skid if you so desire, but obviously best to leave that on at all times. USB is purely a USB feed to the stereo. It's not a charging point, so don't use that to charge your phone. If you want to charge your phone, use the 12 volt socket on the left. And that concludes the handover video for your new Symbol Plus. On behalf of Highland Camper Vans, we'd like to thank you for your business. We're sure this vehicle will bring you lots of miles and lots of smiles. Don't forget, we're always on the end of the phone. If you have any questions or queries, just pick up the phone and give us a call. Either myself or my colleagues, John and Gavin, will be only too happy to help. Thank you very much for watching this video.